Antop Antenna Company reached out and asked if I would be interested in reviewing some of their antenna models, and I said yes I would. So today we're going to unbox and try out their UFO SmartPass Amplified Omnidirectional Outdoor Antenna model AT414B. Now for anyone that doesn't know what an omnidirectional TV antenna is, it's an antenna that picks up signals from all directions. And it doesn't have to be aimed, unlike this antenna here, which is directional and must be aimed in a specific direction to pick up TV signals. Antop says this antenna is for use in a city or suburban area and has a reception range of 55 to 65 miles from the broadcast towers. I would think that range is probably under ideal conditions. And because this antenna is so compact and lightweight, you have a lot of different mounting options for it. There's also a built-in 5G LTE filter to block out those cell phone signals that might interfere with your reception. And out of the box, you get the UFO antenna, a nice sleek design. You also get the mounting arm here, which is adjustable by a wing nut. 33 feet of RG6 coax cable with the weather boot. And that's a plus because a lot of antennas, believe it or not, still include rolls of RG59 cable. You also get a couple of mast clamps for mounting it to a pole and some screws and anchors in case you want to do a wall mount. The power supply to go along with the Antop Smart Pass amplifier as well as an owner's manual. The Smart Pass amplifier installs in line between your antenna and television. This cable here runs back to your TV antenna connected to a longer piece of coaxial cable. This cable here gets plugged into the back of the TV and then your power supply gets plugged into an outlet and the amplifier can work to provide the necessary amplification to help with those weaker signals. The Smart Pass amplifier that's included has two modes of operation. The green LED indicates that the amplifier is turned on and this gives you maximum signal boost for either weak signals or signals that are further away. And then switching it to the off position, the yellow LED indicates that the boost has been cut and this would be useful in strong signal areas to prevent overloading or over amplification of signal and possible signal loss. Doing some preliminary testing inside, I connected the antenna directly to the TV without using the amplifier at all and noticed that it still worked. I was able to pick up VHF channel nine. This is a good design feature because a lot of antennas that include preamps or amplifiers won't work unless the power supply or amplifier is connected. And to get the most out of your antenna, Antop gives some good general antenna mounting advice here. Mounting the antenna in an area that's away from trees or buildings, anything that might obstruct the signal, and mounting it as high as possible aimed at your local broadcast towers. That'll help you get the most out of not just this antenna, but any TV antenna. The diameter of this antenna is 15 inches, and that gives it a circumference of 47 inches which gives it roughly the same span as a small directional antenna. Assembling the UFO antenna is simple with no real tools required. To install the mounting arm, simply line up the teeth on the arm with the grooves on the head of the antenna, install the bolt, which sits captive in a hexagonal hole, and install the wing nut on the other side. This allows you to adjust the angle of the antenna. To install the antenna on a mast or a post, install the U-bolts from the back of the mounting arm, and then on the front, add the washers and wing nuts. There is a curved groove on the back of the mounting arm that will cradle the post as you clamp it tight. Looking at the size of the mast clamp, you want to use a post that's at least an inch and a half in diameter. That's the size I'll be using outdoors today. And connecting the coax cable, and I've got that weather boot attached. That should keep the connection nice and safe. Here it is mounted on a post in the yard, 12 feet in the air on a tripod. When you attach the antenna to the post, remember that the mounting arm is plastic. You don't need to over tighten those wing nuts. Only tighten them by hand, don't use pliers. 
The antenna itself is nice and light, so it's not going to move around too much. Just get it snug enough that it stays in place. It's also a good idea to zip tie the coax cable and leave a bit of slack to avoid any unnecessary stress on that built-in RF connector in the antenna. Do your best to find a mounting area that is clear of trees and as high as possible in order to get the best reception. Here's a look at those connections for the smart pass amplifier behind the TV. This black cable comes in from the antenna. This is an extension piece I used because the white cable included was not quite long enough. That goes into the amplifier. And then coming out of the amplifier is this coax cable that gets connected to your TV or digital converter boxes RF plug. And then it's just a matter of plugging in the power supply for the amplifier and it switches on. And now we can test out this antenna. Just to give you some context about the reception situation in my area, here in Thunder Bay, we only have three free over the air TV stations available. And two of them are local stations. The third one is TV Ontario, which is a repeater from Toronto. Now the interesting thing about them, even though there's only three, they are all on the VHF band. So that presents a unique challenge itself for this antenna, given that it is so small. And normally antennas this size are primarily made to receive UHF and possibly high VHF channels. So let's find out how this antenna does. I started off with the antenna in yellow mode, which switches the amplification off just to see how this antenna does on its own. The antenna was only able to lock channels four and nine. When I switched the amplifier to green mode, turning the amplification on, it was easily able to lock channels two, four and nine when I reran the channel scan. And at the TV, all three channels come in clear with no dropouts. I connected this antenna to my digital converter box to check signal strengths and channels 2 and 4 which are on the low VHF band had a lower signal strength somewhere around 50% albeit with a stable picture. Not surprising given the size of this antenna. However this antenna really shined on VHF channel 9 where the signal strength was in the mid to high 70s. And that confirms that this antenna is better suited for receiving channels on the high VHF and UHF TV bands. With the help of the smart pass amplifier, this antenna is punching above its weight, locking in those low VHF channels, which given its very small size, it's not really designed to receive. Now, keep in mind, I do live less than 10 miles away from the broadcast towers, but also the channels in my area are broadcast at very low power. Given the size of this antenna, I think that the best application for it would definitely be in a city or suburban setting where the broadcast signals tend to be stronger and most channels are broadcast on the UHF and high VHF bands. And because this is an omnidirectional antenna, another good application would be on an RV or recreational vehicle. With this mounted on the roof, you could move place to place, run a channel scan and pick up some local stations without making any adjustments to your antenna. If you're interested in purchasing this antenna, look in the description of this video for a link with a special discount code for my viewers. If you're looking for a good performing TV antenna to pick up some of the local broadcast channels in your area, but you also want something that doesn't stand out too much on your apartment balcony, your house or in your neighborhood, and you want something you don't have to fuss around with too much and make lots of adjustments to, you might want to take a closer look at the Antop UFO Omnidirectional Antenna.